everybody on the thermostat story a bit more info for you not just 120 protos 150 protos could be any engine this is what we specialize in so this is what i've noticed but it could be something similar happening on one of your vehicles and it's a small thing that could cause a lot of problems if it's not working right things are designed to run at the correct temperature i can tell you i haven't got the scan tool plugged on this one and he hasn't got a scan gauge and that's what i wanted to point out soon we're going to have a discount code for some scan gauges and equipment like that so sit tight and um hopefully something more permanent is what i'm working on um, everybody should be monitoring their coolant temperature their transmission temperature and be able to clear dtc's diagnostic trouble codes this vehicle it's nice and clean it's well looked after he loves it look at it no cracks in the dash look how clean it is it's just beautiful right injectors done bfe done everything done thermostat done I haven't got the scan tool plugged in. We're gonna rely on the temperature gauge. It's been running maybe only about five minutes and I've just started driving it. I've only driven a few hundred meters out and I wanna point out where it's at and I'm gonna go for a drive. It's 8.40 a.m. I'm gonna drive a little bit further and let's see what it will, how long it takes to get up to the normal on the temperature gauge here. Okay, you can see it's already on the move. It's only 8.42, it's five degrees, no excuses. This is what should happen. I'll continue a bit further. Amazing, only a little bit later and the coolant temperature is not the only one that's on the rise. So what do we got here? You can see that, block the sun for you, right? Eh? You can see that temperature gauge. Only a few minutes later, this is what looks more like normal, but we're not there yet. Keep driving. Okay, it's 8.45. I'm gonna call this video, how long it should take for your engine to warm up, I think. Now, I'm gonna give you the variables in this by the end, but you can see temperature gauges around about where it would normally sit on a 120. I would guess the coolant temp's gonna be at least 75, between 75 and 82. We'll go a little bit further. 847, it's having trouble warming up outside. You can tell in Melbourne, right? Um, temperature gauge, that's around about where it's gonna be now, that's it. Now that was slowly driving in back streets, but now we're fully up to temperature. Now I'll give you the rundown on all these 120s, 150s, how the temperature gauges work and what you're going to see now. So as you can see, I'm not going to go into the best way to warm up your engine. I've got some videos on that. Just search our channel, best way to warm up your petrol, best way to warm up your diesel, best way to warm up your hybrid, things to consider, blah, blah, blah. And I'll give you the quick one. It's not sit there and let it idle like now. In cold weather, like six degrees, it is gonna take forever and an hour to get up to operating temperature. You're just wasting fuel and contaminating your oil. You don't wanna drive it hard, because it's cold, but you wanna drive it. So you start the engine. I'm talking 10 seconds, as long as it's not revving too much. You know, it starts up and it's up there, not that much, you know, they rev up an engine, something depends which. I'm talking general now, makes some revs up and then it sort of slowly, sort of pretty quickly, slowly drops down. It might be about a thousand, whatever. You know what? Drive the car, petrol or diesel, but drive it slow. I'll give you the quick example again, you know, just kind of go, you know, just drive it, mate. Just drive it, just do something. Now, I'm not gonna give you the example. I'm not gonna give you the example. I did that in the other video, right? Probably bada bing, bada boom, or eat a mango after bingo bango. But you need to drive the car. Just keep the RPMs nice. I mean, depending on where you live, when you get out onto a main road, these are things you've got to consider which way you're going to go. But don't just let it sit there idling. And don't just go sit here. Well, I'll just sit here like this and warm it up. No, we don't want to do that either. Just get in the bloody car and drive it. But drive it nice. Drive it like you've got, what did I say? Anyway, I'm going too much into it, right? So drive it nice, warm it up. Then it'll take you no more than five minutes. Now, I'm gonna give you the variables on different engines quickly on what, how long it should take to warm up. So we know these engines, if you're driving it, even in cold weather, five minutes, you should see it on normal on the temperature gauge. We're gonna keep it on that. And it's just below half, in case you can't quite tell on the video. It's gonna vary a little bit. Yours could sit a little bit higher and it's all normal. The only way to know what the coolant temperature is, is to have a, um, something that plugs into the car in the ODB port and read that temperature. It's the only way to know, unless you put in a coolant temperature sensor, which I would recommend against, is you're gonna drill a hole somewhere where you're gonna have leaks and you don't want that. So get yourself some sort of tool, sit tight, we'll have a code soon for a bit of a discount. Stay tuned, subscribe, turn the bell on. Now, right now, this car's got a new thermostat in it, so I've got a bloody good idea that that's idling at about 
It's going to be about 81 to 83 degrees right now because I've been sitting here idling long enough. Now, try and avoid idle time where you can, but we're just doing a bit of chit-chat and showing you a few things. If you're sitting here a long time, you would just switch the bloody engine off, all right? You just go like that and switch it off. We're going to have a bit of a chit-chat. Now, the smaller... So, petrol engines tend to warm up quicker than diesels. I'm not saying because it's petrol or diesel. I'm just giving you general info. A big engine will take longer to warm up than a small engine. Okay, it's all relative. So, if you've got a little... Um, Suzuki Swift with a small four-cylinder engine and a small cooling system because it's all small It doesn't take much to warm it up a diesel engine makes a bit of heat So the engine itself warms up because it makes heat. It's got a bigger cooling system like bigger than a, a Petrol V8 sort of thing like 12 liters or more depends what what make and model So it's a lot of coolant to heat up. So it takes time, but we pointed out five minutes now some engines um, like your typical little four-cylinder with a smaller cooling system capacity, a few litres. It's going to warm up. Literally, if you start the engine, it's going to start warming up quicker and you start driving slowly. Let's just say, for example, a Corolla. Let's use an awesome Toyota Corolla for an example. You're going to drive out. If you start driving about a K down the road, you're going to be pretty much at operating temperature where this Prado diesel, big cooling system, four-cylinder engine, a lot of coolant, it's going to be 5Ks. It's going to be 6Ks. Like I said, 5 minutes. So just giving you indication for the people that haven't... I didn't want to get distracted by coolant temperatures in this video. I wanted to talk about this. And the problem you got is, once the coolant gauge, the standard one on the vehicle, that one there, gets to there, it's not going to tell you anything important. So while that's sitting there, that could go down to 78. It's not going to move. It could go up to 93. It's not going to move. Now, I can't tell you beyond that, but I'm confident it can go to 95, 98, and it's not going to move. It's like it's got a diode built in or something to stop it moving, because as soon as they start moving, people are taking cars into dealerships saying, oh, my car's overheating. So I'm telling you what's normal. Just below is normal, but like everything on these vehicles, there's these variables, and it can sit as high as half, I'll say, and it's still sitting on a perfect real coolant temperature. Now, if you get the scan gauge three, you can set coolant alarms, which is a good thing as well, which you don't really need on the 1KD because they don't bust hoses or radiators and overheat. The V6, if you insist on keeping the old radiator, I'm just using that as an example. Any old petrol engine that makes heat under the engine bay, deteriorates, plastics, other brands, uh, even worse than Toyota's, the radiator can snap off. You're going to overheat your engine. If you had a coolant alarm, so probably everybody should have these sorts of things in the vehicle, but it depends on your budget. I don't want everyone going blowing 450 bucks on a scan gauge three, because some vehicles, there's not much output. It's not worth it. Like a 1KZ, for example. The, you know, I'd probably get a scan gauge two for that. It's still two or 300 bucks, but something like that. Or I might even just get one of those cheap EDS. There's different options out there. We've got a playlist on scan tools. But I wanted to give you some info to show you where that temperature sits, how long it should take to warm up, and it was five minutes is the answer. Some engines will warm up quicker than that. Some will take a bit longer. Don't tell me, but it's cold weather. We're sitting in six degrees here. It's the best example, and it's still warmed up in five minutes. Bada bing, bada boom. I think I've got the point across. Subscribe, turn the bell on. More videos on this subject soon, and then we'll move on. See ya.